tonight. I'm, I'm hoping to. And I just heard of a Not in Our Town. Um, it's an anti-bias organization. They're hosting a Zoom celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock and it's geared towards elementary age children. And uh, information on that is on the website. Okay, now that we're through with the uh, announcements, I'm gonna share a screen. Long screen. Sorry about that. Hmm, I don't understand why we're... Uh... Sorry, it worked before. There we are. Okay, this morning we are continuing the worship series, God is Holding Your Life. I invite you to take a deep breath as we settle into worship. Let us seek to simplify in this moment, slow down for a time. Let us worship, leaning on prayer, reflection, and sharing with one another, reminding us that through it all, we can trust that God is indeed holding our lives. Now we'll enjoy this prelude from Helen.
This week's psalm text brings home this message. We are in an intimate relationship with God. There's nowhere we can go that God is not present. No state of our being that results in our being abandoned. Dear and near God, you never leave our side. Open us this day to feeling and knowing your presence deep in our hearts so that we might show forth love with the same confidence, offering your reign of right relationship on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for your close attention, holding our lives together in care. Amen. Welcome the Gray family to read the psalm for us. Psalms 139, verses 1 through 18. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hear me in, behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will be night to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days on and ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. 
How vast is the sum of them? Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. Amen. Our guest composer, Richard Culligan, will introduce and play his psalm song, Where Can I Go? Friends, Psalm 139 is a wonderful song about how well God knows us and loves us. In the first part, the psalmist sings of how well God knows us when we sit, when we rise, our thoughts, our feelings, our whole experience, God knows because God is, is with us. In fact, the psalmist says, even if we wanted to try to get away from God, we could not. We, we'd have to, even if we tried to go as far up as we could or as far down as we could or, or take the wings of the dawn and, and ride through the sky to that mountaintop way over there, even, even there God would be with us. There's, there's kind of no escape from God's loving presence. What about at night, the psalmist says, ah, maybe when the sun isn't shining, ah. But the psalmist says, La noche resplandece como el día para ti. Even the night shines like the sun to you. This is a song of celebration of the God that knit us together in our mother's womb like a grandmother, tending each stitch just the way she wanted. Where can I go? For those of you who Zoomed with us last week, you'll be happy to know that my Christmas decorations are finally put away. Now it's time for us to work on our New Year's resolutions. 
So today we celebrate the life and accomplishments of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. The words that come to mind when I think of him are peaceful action, peaceful action. There were other civil rights groups active at the same time that had a much more radical approach. They advocated for freedom by any means necessary, including violence. Malcolm X and the Black Panther Party come to mind. On this day, we should also remember some of Martin Luther King Jr.'s lesser known associates. A. Philip Randolph, Whitney M. Young Jr., James Farmer, Roy Wilkins, John Lewis, and his key advisor, Bayard Rustin. It takes a village. So who was, who was Martin Luther King Jr.? Life magazines includes him in their list of 100 people who changed the world, along with such notables as Mother Teresa, Abraham Lincoln, Nelson Mandela. He was a Baptist minister. He was an activist. He was the founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, advocating for a nonviolent struggle for justice. He was the spokesperson and the leader for the civil rights movement from 1954 until his assassination in 1968. He was the organizer of nonviolent protests, the Montgomery bus boycott, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, August of 1963, five-day Selma to Montgomery March in 1965, the Chicago March in 1967. He was a key player in passing civil rights legislation, the Civil Rights Act in 1964, and the Voting Rights Act in 1965. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 his nonviolent resistance to racial inequality in America. He was a husband and a father. He was always advocating for civil and economic rights and an end to racism. I'd like to share with you several quotes from his famous, his famous I Have a Dream speech given from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial during the 1963 march. I had forgotten how powerful it is. I really found it difficult to find just a few sentences to share with you. So I would encourage you to Google it and read, it, read the speech in its entirety. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And when this happens, when we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God almighty, we are free at last. As I was researching the life of Martin Luther King Jr., I was reminded of how Jesus worked in this world he could have come in guns and blazing, become a powerful ruler, a mighty king, a mighty warrior. Indeed, that is what the Hebrew people were expecting in their Messiah. But he chose to come as the Prince of Peace. Peaceful action works. In Psalm 139 that the Gray family read to us this morning, we hear that God is always there for us. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. Indeed, the name of our sermon series is God is holding your life. But what does God call us to do for him? John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was an activist, caring for the poor, prisoners, widows, orphans. He worked to remedy social injustice including urging the abolition of slavery, setting the course for future generations of Methodists. Our current day Bishop, Bishop Bickerton, has called racism the second pandemic. Our New York Annual Conference is offering many opportunities to learn and to act, 
including the Zoom conference-wide lady celebration <clears throat> that I attended yesterday. There were over 170 participants from the New York, Connecticut area. The theme was Stronger Together. Much of the discussion was based on the book, Black and White, Disrupting Racism, One Friendship at a Time by Tisha Hydra and John Hambrick. Tisha is a young black woman, John a not so young white man. They forged a friendship and they share with us in this book what they've learned through their friendship. So I highly recommend the book. Uh, it's an easy read, very readable, lots of concrete, achievable suggestions for action. And doesn't it make sense to work towards justice and equality by building friendships? I'd like to share a quote from the book. The world needs an activism rooted in the gospel and driven by the Holy Spirit. Ask how God might be leading you to engage in some of the problems you have identified. The bishop earlier this week sent a letter calling us to a time of deep prayer this weekend. He asks us to speak out against evil and to be bold in proclaiming love. Resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. We also acknowledge the deep anguish, hurt, fear, and fatigue that the events of the last few months have caused. So Martin Luther King Jr. was an integral part of achieving rights for people of color. We've come a long way, but there's more work to be done. So who's continuing his work? It takes a village. My New Year's resolution is to learn more how I can work toward a world where all people are not just created equal, but also treated equal. Amen. We come to our moment now of Selah, that mysterious word found in the Psalms that invites us to pause. Pause is something that we need and our faith calls us to this holy pause. We will hear this sound that will invite us to a moment of silence. Feel free to close your eyes if you like. Imagine yourselves held in safety and love and care. And we, when you hear the sound again, open your eyes. Each week we'll have a moment to write prayer concerns on a small pieces of paper and then place them in a container, a symbolic action of placing them in God's hands, in God's care. So I invite you to do that now. I have mine right here. Let the people say, Selah, Selah. In Bishop Bickerton's letter, he calls for a prayer vigil Tuesday evening from 6 to 6 Thursday. And I would like to share with you his prayer. Let us pray for our country, our church, our world, and all the people in it. Let us gather to pray for the transition of power in this country and for the Biden-Harris administration. Let us pray for racial justice and an end to discrimination and hatred. Let us pray for those hospitalized and for families that have lost loved ones, many of whom we know by name. Let us pray for frontline workers and pharmacists that are administering vaccines. And let us pray for one another, acknowledging that the load is heavy and the burden is great. So I invite you to unmute yourselves as we continue our prayers. I will offer a category of prayer and then we'll have a brief pause. And then I invite you to name the people that you would like to pray for. And I do enjoy how we all raise up our voices all at the same time. Um, unity, unity in prayer, but God hears all of our prayers.
Let's pray for the leaders of this world and this church community. Pastor Betty. Pastor Helen. Captain Donald Trump. Trump. Um, Kathy. For, uh, Helen. 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 Or justice, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in conflict around the world. Pray for the Syrians. <clears throat> people, Iranians, Iraqis, Israelis, Palestinians. Amen. Prince of Peace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are experiencing loss of any kind in this pandemic. For oh the family of Jeannie Lassa, Mark, Gates. Comforting healer, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are homeless, hungry, and alone. For all of those who are homeless in Denver and cities. Jackie. Somehow they can lift the Jackie. Manuel, God with us, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in comfort, for Christ-like hospitality and generosity. For Chris Jameson, for Marla Slarsu, for Kristen Matt Beckett, for Shireen, for Jordan Mesklin, who is so ill. Transforming spirit, hear our prayer. Holy and living one, for those we have named and the ones whose names we do not know, hear our prayer. Now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Father, Father, Lord in heaven, Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, will be done, and the earth is the heaven, and the earth is the day of the day of the day, and forgive us our sins, and forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. It is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I invite you to uh, mute yourselves again as we come into a time of offering. I invite you to share not only your financial gifts, but more importantly, your gifts of time and caring and prayer and being a light to the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for holding our lives. We know that you walk with us during both happy and challenging times. We are grateful that there is no place we can go where you will not be with us. We are grateful for the gifts you have given us. Help us to be generous in sharing with those less fortunate. Please bless our offerings, and may they be used to do your work in this world. Amen. Amen. And now it is my pleasure to uh, introduce Melissa Maravell, who's going to uh, sing for us. Just a few words about Precious Lord. Thomas Dorsey was a uh, musician. He was a pianist. He played with Ma Rainey's Black Bottom with her, her but then found it not fulfilling so he started writing more gospel music and he wrote this in response to the loss of his wife in childbirth and his first child so i know it's a sad story but it was also one of martin luther king's favorite hymns precious lord take my hand mm -hmm. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. 
I'm tired and weak, I'm worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my day grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, Hear my cry, hear my call, oh my hand, lest I fall. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near, and the day is past and gone At the river I stand Guide my feet, hold my hand Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home. Melissa, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow. I offer now this benediction. Now go in the knowledge that God is holding your life. Even as we hold each other, you are not alone. You are loved. Amen. Now we'll close with a postlude from Helen and then we'll have our credits and then uh, you're welcome to un uh, unmute yourselves and uh, wish each other a good week.
invite you to unmute, greet everyone. <laughs>